What is up YouTube, Dr. Waji here and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you my hotel quarantine experience in the UK. Um, I thought about making this video because I know I read a lot of frightening stuff online and I wasn't too sure about this hotel quarantine thing. So I thought I'd share with you guys my experience so that, you know, I could help relieve a little bit of that anxiety you guys might be feeling before traveling. So let's get into it. The first step was to make a hotel quarantine booking. If you want to know about how to make a hotel quarantine booking in the UK, do check my video out in the top right hand corner here. Uh, I've made a whole detailed video about that. Anyways, for me, this was the hardest part because CTM was really slow in responding. So I made the booking request on the 1st of September and they told me they wouldn't process my request until two days before the flight, which was the 10th of September. So the whole week I was basically just stressed out wondering if the payment would go through because you need that invoice number to fill your passenger locator form. So just my luck, on the 8th of September, they decided to process my booking request. And what do you know? I got an email from CTM saying that the booking was canceled because the payment for some reason didn't go through. Naturally, I freaked out. I went back on their site and I tried to rebook, but there were no rooms available in Birmingham anymore. So naturally, I panicked some more, but I kept at it. And just by refreshing the page, I actually got another room at another hotel in Birmingham. This time around, they did process my request rather fast because it was less than 48 hours till my flight. But as luck would have it, they wrote my passport number in the final invoice incorrectly. And that could have been an issue for me, so I decided to get that corrected as well. This process wasn't too hard. I called them up and over one phone call, they did amend the invoice and send it to me as soon as I kept the phone down. The whole experience did feel unreal until I actually sat in the airplane and landed in Birmingham. Once I landed in Birmingham, things went by really smoothly. So first up, I was expecting huge queues as I read online, but surprisingly, there weren't any. I guess there are long queues in London Heathrow, but that's something you want to avoid, then I'd suggest coming to Birmingham if you're visiting the UK from a red list country. So what the staff did was they gathered all the people coming from red list countries into one area and they took us to a different terminal. On this terminal, we crossed immigration. After crossing border control, the carousel was a pleasant surprise. Our baggage had already been collected and loaded onto a trolley. From there, we went on to sit in a bus that would take us to our designated quarantine hotel. The bus ride was pleasant. It only took about 15 minutes to get there. And once we arrived at the hotel, the hotel staff made us wait in the lobby where we filled out a couple of forms while they designated us a room. Once we got our room, we went straight up to be honest, I wasn't expecting much because I'd read a lot of horror stories online and, you know, I was pretty much ready for anything. But the room was a pleasant surprise once I actually walked in. Check that out in the next section. Dr. Wajib broadcasting you live from my hotel room in Ramada Solihull. Let's start the tour on the left. First up, we've got this little point for the key. The first door on the left is the bathroom. I'll show that to you in just a second. On our right here is a closet. It's got more than enough space to fit in a decent amount of clothes. We've got this nice cozy little countertop. It comes free with a nice electric kettle. So as you can see, the room's pretty cozy. I'm, I'm liking the vibe. Uh, but it is a bit small. I'll give it that. I was hoping for a little more space, but them's the brakes. Good thing it comes with its own TV. The only downside is that it's not a smart TV. So casting on this thing can be a pain. We have this nifty desk. Here's where I usually sit to edit my videos. And we've got a mirror. Holla at your boy, Dr. Wudgie. Next up is the best part about this room, which is the absolutely stunning view you get from the window.
either by calling the reception or by scanning this QR code and ordering it online, which is pretty cool. So overall, the food wasn't too bad. They did give huge portions in breakfast and dinner, and I'd say dinner had good variety, but breakfast and lunch kind of got repetitive. So on a couple of days, we decided to order in. Mind you, we had to pay additional for anything that we were ordering that wasn't on the menu. Next up, let me show you what our walk area was like. We Okay. So, COVID tests. You gotta get your COVID test done on day two and day eight uh, when you're quarantining in a hotel. The thing is, they will deliver the test to you in a package and you gotta unwrap it, take your own swab, put it back in a box, register yourself online with the NHS and, and repeat for day eight. I know that might sound really difficult and uncomfortable, but there was a lot of guidance available in the brochures that they gave us. Plus, you can always YouTube how to do that stuff, and it's not as hard as you think it is. The whole quarantine thing does cost a lot, and that is by far the worst bit of it. But unfortunately, that's just the way it is. That's uh, what we've got to put up with until things get better. So, overall, the food wasn't too bad. The service was really good. The staff was very polite. Only downside to the stay was the fact that we did have to change our own sheets and keep our room clean because the staff couldn't enter our rooms because of COVID restrictions. So that was my quarantine experience. Overall, it wasn't too bad. Would I want to do it again? Hell no. Can't wait for this whole quarantine thing to end, but I'm really glad that I had my wife to keep me company and uh, otherwise definitely would have gone insane. So this is Dr. Waji signing off. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.